Do you want to learn how to record your song ideas into GarageBand? Well, you are in the right place, and we're going to get started right now. Hey everybody, what's going on? My name is Jeff and welcome to Ignite Music Project. If you're new to the channel and you want to learn how to write, record, mix, and release amazing sounding music all from your home or bedroom studio, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and make sure to hit that little bell icon so that you get notified every time I drop a new video. Well, today is video number two in my How To GarageBand video series, where I walk you from beginning to end on how to record your song and release it all from GarageBand. If you haven't watched video number one, I would suggest you go back and watch that video first. There I talk about setting up your project, going over, going over all the basic controls, the windows, and everything that you're going to need to know to jump in and get started. I'll put a link to that video in the description and also there's a card on the screen right now that you can click to go ahead and watch that video. Go watch that video first, come back here because today we are going to get started on how to record your song ideas into GarageBand. So here we go. Once you launch GarageBand, you're going to see this window and we're going to start with an empty project. And after your project launches, you're going to be greeted with this window asking you which type of track do you want to create? Which one do you want to start with? Well, today we're going to do a little eight measure, eight bar intro song, and it's going to be a combination of electronic instruments with some real electric guitar. So we're going to start by laying down the drums first, which I always like to do. Helps set the groove and helps give you something to record everything else to. And we're going to do that with a software instrument. So we want to pick the keyboard option here or software instrument option. And it's going to pull open a default instrument, which is a, a E piano. There we go. Now I want you to look up here at the top middle section. This is all the project information, the tempo, the meter, the key. Now for our song, 4-4 four, four is fine, the key of C is good, but 120 is a little bit too slow. I want to be a little bit faster than that. So I'm going to double click in that window, type in 150. And then if you look over here, we want to make sure that our metronome is turned on, which is this button here, which it is. And also our count in button. This um, will start playback one measure before you start recording. I always have this on because it helps you listen to the song before you actually have to start recording your part. And like I said, I like to start with drums and we're gonna start with an acoustic drum kit. So if you look over here on the left, this is your library window and this will let you pick channel settings, uh, presets if you will, for different types of instruments. For a software instrument or a keyboard instrument, this is where we can actually pick which type of sound is going to be played or that we're going to control with our MIDI keyboard. And it will also preload the channel with some, some effects and some plugins and things like that to help it sound better. Now I'm using an Alesis QX49 keyboard plugged into my computer via USB. And one thing that's cool about GarageBand is it will automatically detect that keyboard and assign it as an input. As you noticed, as soon as the track came up, I hit the key and, and it started playing. So I don't have to worry about setup or anything. But we're gonna go ahead and pick a drums kit. So if you look over here, drum kit, and then it's gonna give us a list of all different types of acoustic drum kits that GarageBand comes with. So let's do the Soul Cal kit. Okay, so it's loaded up. Now, quick refresher, this is our track list or our track view. This is our edit window where it's going to be recording our information. This is our track inspector, and this is our quick controls menu that gives us some quick controls to affect the way that our drums sound. So let's hear what we've got so far. Cool. So let's take it back to the beginning. If you press the zero key on your number pad, it'll take you all the way back to the beginning. And if you press the R key, that will start recording. Now in GarageBand, it will actually record onto the track that you have highlighted. So whichever track you have clicked on, it's going to be recording onto that track. So let's hit the R key and uh, wait a measure and go ahead and record a, a pattern. Awesome. 
Let's add some floor tom in there. There we go. Now you'll notice when you record over an existing MIDI region, it will by default add to what you've already recorded instead of overriding it and putting something new. So this is a really cool way to do loop recording or things like that if you want to do one piece at a time. So let's do some floor tom. Now we need to add crash symbol. There it is, here we go. Cool, now you'll notice that I did not play everything perfectly in tempo or in time with each other, right? There's some slight variations and it wasn't quite in sync. Now I could go back and re-record those until I get them exactly right, but I'm gonna show you a quick little function here called quantization or quantize. If you have the MIDI region selected and you press the Q key on your keyboard, it will quantize the audio or it will quantize the MIDI information, meaning that it'll bring each of the notes to the closest beat and line it up exactly. So now let's hear what we've got. Great, you notice that everything was right in sync with each other and it sounds great. Now that we have our drums recorded, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the metronome because my drums will keep our time for us. And now I want to add another track and I wanna actually do some drum machine sounds to go along with my acoustic drum set. So if I wanna add a track, you're gonna click the plus button up here at the top left of the track window and it'll open up this dialog box. And again, we're gonna pick a software or a keyboard instrument. Okay, so over here in the list, or in the library window, we want to select electronic drum kit. And then you can go through and listen to all of these. Click on one, let it load, and then play it on your keyboard to see what it sounds like. But we're going to actually go with big room. Awesome. Let's press zero to get back to the beginning. And then press the R key to start the click and record. Cool, press my Q key to quantize. Awesome, so now let's throw in some bass. Let's go ahead and add another track. And then look over here, we want a synthesized bass guitar or bass sound. So let's click on synthesizer. Let's do EDM bass. Let's do this first one. Cool, that sounds fun. Let's figure out what our bass line's gonna be. That will work. Let's go ahead and record. Okay, awesome. Now I'm gonna take this opportunity to show you something else pretty cool. So say for instance, you record a track and you play the wrong note, like I did there at the very end. You can open up the edit window by either double clicking on the region or pressing the E key when you have the track selected. And then it's gonna open up and show you the MIDI information. Each note I played is represented by one of these little lines and it's lined up with a certain key on the keyboard. If you click on the note, it will play it back for you and that's the note that I know is wrong and actually I don't even want that note to play. So I'm gonna click it and hit the backspace. And let's listen to what we have so far.
cool. Let's add another track and get some other synth elements in here. Let's go over to our library window. Now I want something that's a little bit more rhythmic um, that kind of plays automatically and, and does some cool things with the rhythm. So I'm going to click Arpeggiator. Let's do Synth Layers and what's this one sound like? Ooh, that's pretty cool. Let's do something with that. Hit the R key to record. Here we go. Hit the Q key to quantize. There's a note here on this synth track that quantized too early. Let's find it. It's that one right here. As you can see, it should be lined up right here and it starts too early. So you can actually click and drag. So now it'll sound like this. Awesome. Okay, now we need some kind of a synth lead sound. Something that fills out the chord a little bit more. Let's add another track. And we want a synthesizer. And let's do a synth lead. Let's go ahead and pick this one here. Hear what that sounds like. I like that. and record. Awesome. Quantize that. Now let's add some electric guitar to the mix. And then instead of clicking a software instrument, we're going to click the guitar amp. Okay, now I have my electric guitar plugged in with my quarter inch guitar cable into input number two on my audio interface that's plugged into my, my computer via Firewire. So down here in the inspector window is where you can set which input GarageBand's gonna listen to to record your sound. So you can see right here, it's actually set to number one, which is not right. So you click the drop down, select the right input, and then right here is the button that will allow you to hear what is going in and going to be recorded. It's called monitoring or input monitoring. So if I click that, I can actually hear what is being played. So I actually don't mind the sound that it's already chosen for me, but you can pick different types of amps and styles here and load something different, but I don't want something super overdriven or anything like that. Just want something kind of clean with a little bit of gain and, and grit to it. Awesome. So I think that is all the elements that I want to use for this song. I'm actually going to take that four bar pattern and repeat it twice and do an ending on beat one of measure nine and that will be my little eight bar intro in my next how to garage band video we are going to go over how to mix this song once i've arranged it and put it all together i'm going to go over plugins effects balance make sure that it sounds great and get it ready to export and share Again, my name is Jeff. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please go ahead and subscribe. Share this video with somebody, a, mu a music friend that you know that wants to learn how to record their own music. And until next time, guys, see ya.